With all the dumb Elon Musk nonsense that's happening at any given time, it's easy to get so bogged down in the main plot line that you forget about the side plots, mm -hmm. like those dumb tunnels, or that dumb robot, or that dumb chatbot, or that dumb microchip that he wants to put into people's brains. Yeah. Speaking of which, what's going on with Neuralink anyway? Hmm. Last we heard, they were testing it out on monkeys, and those monkeys were all subsequently dying horrible deaths that seemed well beyond the limits of what's usually acceptable during animal trials. Mm -hmm. Surely, Neuralink, whose only technological accomplishment has been making apes die in new excruciating ways, would not be ready for prime time anytime soon. And surely no human being, no matter how desperate, would look at what Elon Musk has gotten up to in the last year and think, yeah, I'm going to let that man drill a computer into my brain. But on both counts, I am apparently dead wrong That's because right. Elon Musk says human trials have officially begun. All right. Well, this news was delivered, of course, via a tweet from Elon, which read, The first human received an implant from Neuralink yesterday and is recovering well. Initial results show promising neuron spike detection. And that's pretty much the full extent of the announcement, with no further confirmation from Neuralink itself on their socials or even on their blog. So there's still a non-zero chance Elon is just lying. And honestly, we hope that he is. <laughs> because again, the stuff they were doing to monkeys just a year ago was seriously fucked up. The idea of something similar happening to a human test subject is terrifying. Especially when you consider the only people eligible to sign up are people who are already quadriplegic. You could argue that someone in that situation might think it's worth the risk if it means possibly regaining some level of physical autonomy, but you'd also hope they were fully aware of how serious those risks are. Yeah. But going uh, back to the statement itself, the funniest thing I saw was, this is a file that you find in a sci-fi dystopian video game. Yeah, and people like, people even mocked those up. like Yeah, uh, yeah, the typed out screens. Yeah, this is stuff. on like one of the, the Fallout computer terminals. Yep. In a building you walk through and there's just skeletons everywhere. Yeah, this is this is some uh, pretty on-the-nose foreshadowing yeah. for a company that nosedives and takes humanity But that's almost giving it too much credit. Mm -hmm. It's more likely that uh, it's just a guy is going to suffer just an extremely excruciating experience. Did he, did he indicate, I guess he, I guess he did, but that the humans were alive because maybe he can like hook up the brain and like, well, it's... It's working in there. Yeah, I mean, I think when they say human trials, that's usually what they mean. But he yeah, I guess it could be a corpse. Yeah. I bet Elon's got a lot of those just lying around. <laughs> He's got a lot of skeletons in his closet. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, assuming Musk is telling the truth, and this is really happening, our biggest question would be, how the hell this managed to get FDA approval? Well, apparently, human trials were approved back in May. But the details of the approval are confidential. And the approval came in the midst of all of that controversy over animal testing, which Reuters recaps here from their report back in May. Neuralink employees told Reuters last year that the company was rushing and botching surgeries on monkeys, pigs, and sheep, resulting in more animal deaths than necessary, as Musk pressured staff to receive FDA approval. The animal experiments produced data intended to support the company's application for human trials, the sources said. In one instance in 2021, the company implanted 25 out of 60 pigs with the wrong size devices. Oops. All the pigs were subsequently killed, an error that employees said could have been easily avoided with more preparation. In May, U.S. lawmakers urged regulators to investigate whether the makeup of a panel overseeing animal testing at Neuralink contributed to botched and rushed experiments after Reuters reported on potential financial conflicts on the panel. The Department of Transportation is separately probing whether Neuralink illegally transported dangerous pathogens on chips removed from monkey brains without proper containment measures. And yeah, that part at the end about illegally transporting monkey diseases was news to us too. But it's yet another reason why it's baffling that the FDA told them that it was, okay, go ahead, start those human trials. The FDA previously outright rejected the trial application back in 2022, which didn't end up being revealed until a year later as reported in this March 2023 report from Reuters. The rejection has not been previously reported. In explaining the decision to Neuralink, the agency outlined dozens of issues the company must address before human testing, a critical milestone on the path to final product approval, the staffer said. The agency's major safety concerns involve the device's lithium battery, the potential for the implant's tiny wires to migrate to other areas of the brain, and questions over whether and how the device can be removed without damaging brain tissue, the employees said. A year after the rejection, Neuralink is still working through the agency's concerns. 
Three staffers said they were skeptical the company could quickly resolve the issues. Despite Musk's latest prediction at a November 30th presentation that the company would secure FDA human trial approval this spring. And it looks like those staffers were wrong. And Elon was right. Yet again, they did get that FDA approval this that is spring. The, this is the first deadline I refuse to miss. Well, he he set like several deadlines before that one. But this one he was right about. Uh -huh. He was saying like as soon as this shit launched, it was like, what, 20... 17, 2018, it's yeah. like, yeah, human trials next year. Wasn't there a point at during, I could be wrong, but a, a point during the monkey testing drama where he said that it was fine because all these monkeys were going to die anyway? Yeah, he uh, he said they were terminally ill monkeys. And then everyone who'd ever been involved in medical testing was like, no, <laughs> no, Elon. He, what happened here is he saw the term terminal test subject. That just means that the animal is going to be euthanized at the end mm -hmm. of the experiment. He saw that and not knowing how this shit works, just said they were all terminally ill because you would never test on terminally ill animals. Yes, that wouldn't be that good results. You wouldn't get good results. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. So they got the FDA approval, but I mean, I, I guess that means maybe after thousands of animal deaths, they actually managed to fix their shit. Hey, bravo. It's possible. Though it's still a bit hard to believe, mm -hmm. especially when former Neuralink employees were quoted saying stuff like, he can't appreciate this is not a car. This is a person's brain. This is not a toy. Not inspiring a lot of confidence with no. that. No. But yeah, we genuinely hope that they did manage to turn things around. Because if not, whoever got picked for that first human trial is in for a potentially very bad time. Yeah. I really hope I'm wrong and Elon fully pulled it off this time because the new horrors beyond our comprehension the possibly await this man. was a success. Our patient has said the N word. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are joking. Oh, it must have been it, it, Ian Miles Chong was the first one to get it. Yeah, one of his. He's already guys. got that soft skull because the doctor grabbed it too hard or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, like there have been like over the years a lot of Musk stands who are like, "Dear Elon, like I've been paralyzed since I got in a car accident. Like, would you please let me be one of your test subjects?" And it's like, fuck. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. no. But speaking of people who are having a bad time, Elon barely even got a chance to gloat about Neuralink's big milestone before the Delaware Court of Chancery came back into his life and delivered yet another very expensive L for L on Musk. The Court of Chancery! Now, you'll recall that Musk's previous encounter with the Delaware Court of Chancery was the case that Twitter brought against him for trying to back out of buying them once he realized how stupidly inflated his $44 billion offer was. And that case resulted in Musk being forced to buy Twitter, which obviously we have very mixed feelings about, since on the one hand, it has lost him an insane amount of money, but on the other hand, Twitter's been totally ruined. Yeah. Um, well, this week, that same Delaware judge, Kathleen McCormick, once again rinsed Elon. <laughs> this time by siding with Tesla shareholders in a lawsuit over whether Elon was paying himself too much money. Here's CNBC. A Delaware judge on Tuesday voided the $56 billion pay package Ooh. of Tesla CEO Elon Musk, ruling that the company's board of directors failed to prove that the compensation plan was fair or show much evidence that they had even negotiated with him. Tesla's share price slid about 3% in after-hours trading on Tuesday following news of the decision in the lawsuit filed by Richard Tornetta, a shareholder in the electric automaker. Chancery Court Chancellor Kathleen McCormick told the parties in the lawsuit to confer on what would be a final order directing Musk to return the compensation he has received under the plan. Musk can appeal the decision to the Delaware Supreme Court. The pay package that Tesla granted Musk in 2018 was the largest compensation plan in public corporate history, McCormick noted in her 200-page ruling. The package made the Tesla and SpaceX boss a centi billionaire and the richest person on the planet. Not anymore, I guess. No. Uh, we're not going to pretend to fully understand the legality behind this, but basically when you're a publicly traded company like Tesla, the board of directors is supposed to operate independently of management and make decisions on behalf of the shareholders. And that doesn't seem to have happened properly with that pay package. From the article, McCormick ruled that Tornetta had proved that Musk controlled Tesla and that the process leading to the board's approval of his compensation was deeply flawed. She wrote that Musk had extensive ties with the people who were negotiating for Tesla on the package, including members of management who were beholden to Musk, among them General Counsel Todd Marin, his former divorce attorney. 
There is no greater evidence of Musk's status as a transaction-specific controller than the board's posture towards Musk during the process that led to the grant, McCormick wrote. Put simply, neither the compensation committee nor the board acted in the best interests of the company when negotiating Musk's compensation plan. In fact, there is barely any evidence of negotiations at all, she wrote. Rather than negotiate against Musk with the mindset of a third party, the compensation committee worked alongside him, almost as an advisory body. Yeah, you can't do that when you're a publicly traded company. Sorry. But he did until he didn't. So yeah, it's unclear how much of Elon's net worth just got shaved off here, but it's probably in the tens of billions. And and at least like he was looking at Twitter like, okay, well, sure, I burned $44 billion, but I've got $50 billion right over here in compensation from Tesla. Just yeah. sitting there waiting. It was all stock, too. And stock which continues which, to tumble. Which he uses as collateral on everything he does. So Yeah, yeah he doesn't seem stoked about it. And he, uh, he wrote this tweet in response. Never incorporate your company in the state of Delaware. Which is pretty funny, considering Delaware is widely known as the most pro-business state in the union. Mm-hmm. There are more corporations registered in Delaware than there are people living in Delaware. And Delaware's former senator, our president, Joe Biden. (laughs) Very cool. But yeah, it's basically a domestic tax shelter. But there are limits still. And now Elon and his buddy, Greg Wheels Abbott, they're talking about moving Tesla's incorporation to Texas, which for a while has been gunning to basically be Delaware, but uh, less woke. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, let's let's move on now to other news. (laughs) Uh, The Senate Judiciary Committee held a hearing this week where they once again hauled in a bunch of social media executives so they could just yell at them. And this time it was for a pretty good reason. But some senators still used it as an opportunity to make asses of themselves, particularly Senator Tom Cotton, whose back and forth with the CEO of TikTok went viral for being basically McCarthyism, but somehow even more racist. You said today, as you often say, that you live in Singapore. Of what nation are you a citizen? Singapore. Are you a citizen of any other nation? No, Senator. Have you ever applied for Chinese citizenship? Senator, I served my nation in Singapore. No, I I did not. Do you have a Singaporean passport? Yes, and I served my military for two two and a half years in Singapore. Do you have any other other passports from any other nation? No, Senator. Your wife is an American citizen. Your children are American citizens. That's correct. Have you ever applied for American citizenship? No, no, not yet. Have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? Senator, I'm Singaporean. No. Have you ever been associated or affiliated with the Chinese Communist Party? No, Senator. Again, I'm Singaporean. Oh, uh, yeah. And he followed that up by grilling him about Tiananmen Square and the Uyghurs. What does this have to do with anything, Tom? This was a hearing on child online safety, a a very important topic. (laughs) A lot of evidence suggests that social media algorithms are very bad for the mental health of young people, And it's definitely worth exploring why that is and what these companies are doing or not doing to to stop that. Uh, But instead of talking about that, you get Ted Cruz accusing the CEO of TikTok of basically using mind control to make American teenagers anti-Israel. I love this one because it's like, yeah, other if not for TikTok, uh, just your average American teenager would pledge allegiance to Israel, a foreign country on the other side of the world that... uh, it's, yeah, it's not something you naturally would just love. But if, and, <laughs> without TikTok, how are we going to get that awesome video of Mayim Bialik uh, over laughing yeah. about uh, a comedian? And like really forcing out the laughter. Yes. God, I'm so I'm so glad she's not the the celebrity host of Jeopardy anymore. That's right. As it, it was fascinating. I watched a few episodes of it and it's like you would think as a celebrity herself, like she'd have good rapport with the guests. But no, garbage. Ken Jennings, the goat. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we're not absolving TikTok of being probably pretty bad for the mental health of children, but it's always fascinating how their algorithms and their data tracking are treated like a Chinese communist plot instead of just something that every social media company does because it makes them money and there are no laws saying that they can't do that. Just like the Sean videos tweet. <laughs> Turns out these people are just trying to run a business. Uh, it Yes, there's probably some uh, yeah. weird shit going on. You don't with, like uh, TikTok doing all this shit? Pass a fucking law. Yeah. Oh, but you won't because lobbyists from Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and uh, Snapchat, or they, they are giving you money. So you don't do that mm-hmm. because if you pass those laws, they make less money and then you get less money. Yeah. 
Anyways, aside from all that, the hearings were a somber affair attended by people whose loved ones had suffered or died as a result of their social media use. Here's the AP. Sexual predators, addictive features, suicide and eating disorders, unrealistic beauty standards, bullying. These are just some of the issues young people are dealing with on social media. And children's advocates and lawmakers say companies are not doing enough to protect them. On Wednesday, the CEOs of Meta, TikTok, X, and other social media companies went before the Senate Judiciary Committee to testify as lawmakers and parents grow increasingly concerned about the effects of social media on young people's lives. The hearing began with recorded testimony from kids and parents who said they or their children were exploited on social media. Throughout the hours-long event, parents who lost children to suicide silently held up pictures of their dead kids. Yeah, so this is, was a hearing in which most of the yelling at CEOs was pretty warranted and very bipartisan. These companies have chosen profits over child safety. And the scene was so grim that at one point Mark Zuckerberg even stood up and apologized directly to the families in attendance. Though he rejected the suggestion that he should provide compensation to any of them. No, no, no. Uh, and interestingly, one of the few executives to state their support for new legislation was Linda Ra Yaccarino. Linda! There you go. Way to go, yet Linda. Linda. Here's Mashable. Of those who were called to testify, only two have voiced their outright support for one of the biggest proposed pieces of legislation on this topic, the Kids Online Safety Act, COSA, Spiegel of SNAP, and Yaccarino of X. However, while COSA may be presented as a way to keep children safe on the internet, critics have warned that the bill is pro-censorship, can harm children, and will chip away at online privacy. This particularly makes Yaccarino's support of COSA stand out. In short, everything that Elon Musk's free speech platform X claims to supposedly be against. Yeah, that is interesting. I wonder if Elon knew about this or he's too busy with all of his other stuff. In my conspiracy mind, I, I assume that he has a lot of handshake deals going yeah. on with uh, a lot of people. Also, Washington. she's the fall gal. Yes. I didn't do censorship. Linda did it. Yeah. Anyway, it continues. COSA is presented as a bill that protects children online, and it enjoys bipartisan support under the auspices that it primarily does that. But critics of COSA, like the online civil liberties group Electronic Frontier Foundation, have called the proposed law a huge danger to our rights online. Under the proposed legislation, LGBTQ content could be targeted and important self-harm and suicide prevention material could be blocked from youth who need these resources. Furthermore, online privacy for everyone would erode as users would be required to provide age verification documents to access certain platforms or content. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, we personally haven't looked over the proposed legislation, but that, that is a good reminder that um, despite the seemingly bipartisan approach to this issue, they're mad about different things. It gets a lot less bipartisan the closer you look. They all agree it's bad for kids, but Republicans, they think that it's because TikTok is turning kids into trans furries who poop in litter boxes at school. That's, they're mostly concerned about that. Mm -hmm. So while there should probably be legislation addressing this, we're not super confident in U.S. lawmakers to really solve any of it. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, though, our lawmakers' ignorance of how technology works could be a real asset in another piece of proposed legislation, which, as we predicted, was hastily drafted up in the wake of those gross AI-generated Taylor Swift images that spread on Twitter last week. Here's The Verge. U.S. lawmakers have proposed letting people sue over faked pornographic images of themselves, following the spread of AI-generated explicit photographs of Taylor Swift. The Disrupt Explicit Forged Images and Non-Consensual Edits Defiance Act. Wow, that was a real stretch. They stretched that They one spent out. more time coming up with the acronym than... We need a good acronym. Yeah. Would add a civil right of action for intimate digital forgeries depicting an identifiable person without their consent letting victims collect financial damages from anyone who knowingly produced or possessed the image with the intent to spread it. The bill was introduced by Senate Majority Whip Dick Durbin, joined by Senators Lindsey Graham, Amy Klobuchar, and Josh Hawley. It builds on a provision in the Violence Against Women Act Reauthorization Act of 2022, which added a similar right of action for non-faked explicit images. In a summary, the sponsors describe it as a response to an exponentially growing volume of digitally manipulated explicit AI images, referencing Swift's case as an example of how the fakes can be used to exploit and harass women, particularly public figures, politicians, and celebrities. Amy Klobuchar being like, what is Vore? Why are they making Vore of me? Oh, God! <laughs> but yeah, you know, like we said, it's just like with the celeb nude leaks 10 years ago that got the law to finally start giving a shit about revenge porn. Non-consensual AI porn has been a problem 
Since deep fakes first showed up a few years back, and with the latest AI generators, it is now an even scarier problem. And seeing a hugely famous celebrity fall victim to it in a very public way was just the wake-up call that they needed to treat it as the urgent legal issue that it is. And unlike with social media, it's actually it's good that they're tackling this now while OpenAI and MidJourney are young, before they've got enough lobbyists on their payroll to make the issue just sort of something that they got to show up to a few hearings every few months for so they can get yelled at, but then nothing actually changes. Just yeah. a bunch of kayfabe. So <sighs> get this fucking done. Do it now. Uh, speaking of AI, remember when a few weeks back when beloved comedian Will Sasso sent his reputation down the toilet by hosting a full AI-generated George Carlin stand-up special on his podcast? I mean, this was pretty overwhelmingly seen as gross due to the fact that George Carlin, one of the greatest comedians of all time, has been dead for over 15 years. And it was seen as tone deaf by everyone concerned that AI would be replacing humans in various creative fields. It did not go over well. Nope. And last week, George Carlin's estate went ahead and sued over it. Here's NBC News. Carlin's estate filed a lawsuit in California federal court alleging copyright infringement and a violation of the late comedian's right to publicity. There is no visual representation of Carlin. The video instead shows a series of AI-generated images, but the voice touches on familiar themes such as religion and politics while also discussing the comedian's own death. This legal action illustrates how AI and creative works is one of the biggest issues in entertainment and comes after a months-long writer's strike in Hollywood last year, partly over studios' use of AI in generating scripts. Carlin, one of the most legendary stand-up comedians in history, dedicated his life to perfecting his craft only for a couple of podcasters and a mysterious AI to slap together a special called George Carlin, I'm Glad I'm Dead, without permission, and posted it to YouTube, the Carlin estate said in a statement to NBC News Thursday night. The lawsuit said, Defendant's AI-generated George Carlin special is not a creative work. It is a piece of computer-generated clickbait which detracts from the value of Carlin's comedic works and harms his reputation. It is a casual theft of a great American artist's work, the statement said. So, this has the potential to be a groundbreaking lawsuit if it goes to trial, but it has already resulted in a revelation that definitely changes things. And <laughs> I don't know if it makes them look better or worse. Yeah. It's, I'm leaning towards worse. I don't. I also don't know if they're lying. It's a, it's yeah. It's a. It's a very okay. strange uh, development. Yeah. In this, so it's a twist. Yeah. From the New York Times, the lawsuit calls for a judge to prevent Dudesy, which advertises itself on social media as AI podcast YouTube show from using Carlin's copyrighted works in the future and to require the podcast to destroy the episode's audio and video. Danielle Dell, a spokeswoman for Sasso, said Doozy is not actually an AI. It's a fictional podcast character created by two human beings, Will Sasso and Chad Colchin. Dell wrote in an email, the YouTube video, I'm Glad I'm Dead, was completely written by Chad Colchin. What? Uh, a spokesperson for Colchin did not respond to a request for comment. Dell declined to comment about whether the Carlin-sounding voice was generated by AI. Oh! So not, not only was this horrific bad idea uploaded under the guise of it being AI, right. but it was a meticulously crafted human experiment. Yeah, because before it was like, listen, love it or hate it, we can all agree this is a pretty tremendous technological achievement. But was it? They're saying it wasn't. Yeah, which is a very strange way to take this if you're not telling the truth. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, was it, what is funny about this is that while it might help these podcasters in court, it also completely undermines the entire premise of the podcast, which has been running for like at least a year, I think. Mm -hmm. And the premise is that an AI called Dudesy is running the show and deciding what each episode is about. And the hosts are only finding that out at the start of each episode. And that's part of the comedy is just... Oh, God, what's this episode going to be about? Oh, no, dudesy. It's an interesting concept, uh, but people have, of course, had their doubts about the authenticity of it for a while. Mm -hmm. And if the George Carlin thing wasn't actually AI, has the whole show just been a normal human podcast? Because there's, there's a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of ruins the joke. The central premise of your show being a lie. Yeah, it's just a very bizarre situation that these two dudes have willingly put themselves into. Yeah. Yeah. It's also funny because while most people hated this Carlin stunt, the AI freaks, they loved it. They considered it a great example of the future of entertainment. Turns out not so much. Yeah. 
Anyways, that's our show. But uh, before we go, we need to pour one out for one of the few tech stories from recent years that actually brought us joy. That little Ingenuity helicopter that NASA sent to Mars back in 2021 with the Perseverance rover. It is finally out of commission. Rest it's so sad. They sent this little guy to Mars figuring they would just see what if, if it would even work. Yeah. Hey, why not let's fly a little Fuck helicopter it. around? Fuck it. And if it did work, would it may, they thought it would probably only last yeah. a couple of weeks. One or two sorties, that's it. Before something went wrong or just died. But it managed to stay in operation for nearly three years and fly 72 missions before finally breaking one of its blades last week. So, good night, sweet prince. You boldly flew where no tiny helicopter had flown before. Yeah, and we got a lot of great footage out of it. And yeah, it just brought me joy seeing that little helicopter flying around on Mars. And uh, yeah, it'll probably be a few years, but I hope next time they send an even, an even cooler, maybe... You would think they'd send a bigger helicopter. I hope they send a smaller helicopter. I hope everything they do on Mars is cute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps me interested. Tie a little bow onto it. Yeah. Yeah. Little uh, googly eyes. There you go. Put googly eyes on the next drone. It, <laughs> people are going to pay way more attention if all these Mars things look cute. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that, uh, that rover they got around down there. Just, uh, you know. Give it some big googly eyes. Big googly eyes. Yeah. And uh, like a uh, just anything. Some pants. Put some pants on it. Yeah. That'd be cool. Anyway, that's a show. Again, yeah. no sponsor. Also, we got through this really fast. That was a lot of script. Yeah. Oh, well. Use some B-roll or something. Some, so many of you complain about uh, how long the episodes are. Well, look, well, you got a short one. Here you go. A short one. Now, uh, now you have more time for your shitty life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you click the join button by uh, by clicking it. Click the join button to become a channel member if you want. Uh, January is always weird anyway. It's coming out right after the Christmas season, so all the ad buys or yeah. whatever. Plus, every industry is fucking collapsing right now. So help us not collapse by becoming a, a channel member and uh, watch our other videos. They're going to be popping up. Oh, like the video. Yeah, like the, of course. Yeah, like the video. come on. Come on. Come on. Well, look, we got some time to kill. What are you going to do? Not like it? Yeah. Come on. Go up there. It's one click. It's just one click. Tap, yeah, and tap. That now, now that you're done clicking it, leave a comment. I might even reply. Who knows? You never know what's going to happen down there in the comments. It all happens on the YouTube, YouTube comments. comments. Yep. All right, now the videos are popping up. Yeah, you got a Taylor Swift one where we talk about conservatives losing their minds about Taylor Swift. I was nervous. Let's talk about that. I was ner I was like, man, th this is like the third Taylor Swift video that we've done. And I, I know that we're just covering the news and it does have like ramifications and things. But it's also like, I get when people are like, oh, God, Taylor Swift in another video. But uh, considering how crazy the rest of the media has gone in the past two days about, about this, and then I'll probably talk about our news dump, but like Trump made an offhanded comment where he's like, I actually, I think I'm more popular, I'm more than, popular than Taylor <laughs> Swift. Yeah, it's it's very exciting. It's I, all going like Sean Hannity's talking about it now. Uh, her so I'm music, like, okay. Her music has like zero effect on me whatsoever. Like it doesn't inspire disgust or joy. It's like, hmm. It's like white noise, but I appreciate how insane she makes everyone else. I couldn't name one song or even hum one, but when I hear it, Shake I'm like, it off. Shake okay, it off is yeah, a pretty yeah, good go. song. I like that one. Yeah, when it so, comes on at like a wedding, that's the only time I hear yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, when I hear one, I'm like, okay, that's there you go. Um, but yes, uh, it went from craziness on Monday and has only increased. So, uh, And then we have Weekly Weird News. What did we cover on that? Dueling. We're bringing back ah, dueling. Dueling. But only for senators. That's how we stretch out an episode, yeah. folks. Yep, like that sweet uh, saltwater taffy, baby. All right. Now we'll see you soon for News Dump and Weekly Weird News coming up. See you then. Bye-bye.